So you're working from home. You're having a hard time staying productive and you're kind of all over the place. You Maybe you're feeling a little disorganized. You have stuff going on all over in your brain. Maybe working fully digitally away from people is not something that you're used to. That used to be me. I used to be all over the place. And I went down this rabbit hole, I suppose, of figuring out productivity systems and things like that, that has helped me at least at some level stay on track for myself. So today what I wanted to do is spend a little bit of time talking through some of the top essential tools that you might want to have in your tool belt to be able to stay productive and focused while working from home. Hey, my name is Justin with Effective Remote Work. Let's take a look at my recommendations for the types and kinds of tools that you might want to employ use of if you're struggling staying focused and on track and organized when you're working remotely. Now, just for watching this video, I wanted to give you a gift. I have recently written a brand new guide called Remote Work 101. If you head over to effectiveremotework.com slash remote 101, you can download this guide completely for free. And if you'd like to, you can join my mailing list there too so you can get updates for future things that we're going to release. All right, so one of the very first tools that I recommend folks use to try to get their thoughts organized is some kind of note-taking tool. I'm a big fan of Obsidian, which you can see on the screen here. Obsidian is a great way to take notes and network ideas together to process through broad concepts. If you subscribe to my channel, you will see here that I have a lot of videos on Obsidian. I think it's one of the best applications for getting yourself organized and at least your thoughts together that there is out there. Now, the reason that I think a note-taking tool is so important is because as a digital worker, you're working primarily with information. And your brain doesn't do well when you try to keep it all up here in your head. It's best if you can get it out and store it somewhere else. And I think a note-taking tool is a great place to start with that. You can put your thoughts in here, you can put ideas in here, you can even put to-dos in something like Obsidian and come back to them at a later point in time. You don't have to hold on to it in your brain at all. And instead, you can focus on getting the work done instead of trying to figure out what that thing was that someone said that needed to be done in a meeting. You can take notes in meetings, you can take notes on projects that you're working on just to keep yourself on track. Now, an alternative to something like Obsidian would be Craft. Craft, if you are on the Apple ecosystem, is a very similar note-taking tool. It's very classily designed. Uh, if you're familiar with Notion at all, it's very similar to that, but it has a very native feel to it. Craft might be something that you would want to take a look at if you are first getting into note-taking that as well as Obsidian. Now the next tool on my list is some kind of a task manager where a note-taking software is where you can put everything into it and try to keep organizing your thoughts. A task manager is specifically for tasks, things that you're committed to doing now. Now if you're juggling a lot of balls in the air and you're having a difficult time trying to get things sorted out or maybe you've dropped a couple of important things that got lost in the shuffle of everything else, maybe a task manager is the right place to turn. I've found that if I can get everything that I'm actively working on, that I'm committed to, that I have to get done into a task manager, it's a lot easier for me to keep track of it. One of my favorite recommendations for people starting off in task management is to use a tool like Todoist. Todoist is extremely simple, but it has a balance of power user features. So this is what Todoist looks like. You can put your tasks in an inbox. You can mark things for working on today. You can plan out your next seven days pretty easily or upcoming. You can tag items. You can organize them into projects. You can do lots with it. There's mobile apps and it's completely cross-platform. Whether you're on Windows, Mac, or Linux, you can get access to Todoist. Now, if you're on Mac only, like I am, a great an alternative option is to use Things. Things has applications on Mac iOS and iPad OS. And this is one of the most beautifully designed task managers that there is out there. Now, if I can find a screenshot, 
I will show you what things looks like. Here it is. So things is very similar in layout to Todoist, but it functions things a little bit differently. Uh, instead of having just projects in the sidebar over here, you can bundle things by areas, which is nice if you're looking to time block by different areas or organize by areas, but you can employ whatever level of organization that you want to in these type of task managers. You can plan things for today, or you don't have to, you can just keep a broad list in there. The whole point is if you're gonna use a task manager, you put your tasks in it, you work in this list, at least semi-regularly, make sure it's up to date so that you can rest assured in your mind that all of the things that you have to do are somewhere that you can find them at a later point in time or that they can come to the surface when it's most important, say if they're on due on a specific date. The next thing that I find is most important and you probably already use this already is some kind of a calendar. Now I just published a recent video on time blocking and I'll put a link to it up here if you're interested in taking a look at that. One of the most important ways you can use your calendar is to block off times for you to get work done, not just for scheduling meetings, which are technically more interruptions and distractions in your day. If you can block off time to work on the most important work for you, that is something that's very important to do, especially if you're having difficulties focusing at home. I'll let you check out that video so you can learn a little bit more about time blocking in particular, but having a calendar in general just gives you a good sense of what's happening in your day. Now, you might live out of your calendar already, being booked end to end from meetings. There are some different ways that we cover in that video about how to handle your calendar so you actually have time to work on projects that are important to you and to your job. Now this is just Apple's calendar application. Um, you can use Outlook if you want to, Google Calendar. You can use Fantastical as well if you're wanting some more advanced features. There are tons of calendar applications out there, but mostly all of them do relatively similar things. Now the last tool that I have on my list here is something analog. I know a lot of people who work remotely get tired of sitting in front of a computer screen all day long. I am one of them. And one of the ways that I have augmented my ability to be productive without having to sit in front of a computer screen is to use analog tools to allow myself to be productive, but also stay connected to the work that I am doing without being on a computer. One of the main tools that I like is to use the bullet journal method. There's this great book by Ryder Carroll called The Bullet Journal Method uh, that I recommend checking out if you're interested in the bullet journal. It's a very, very simple way to get started. I'm not going to get too deep into it in this video, but basically you start off by just uh, using a rapid logging uh, technique where you just write down the date and then you start writing down tasks with bullet points, notes with little dashes, and then circles for events. And you just start going down the list uh, and fill it out throughout the day. And I find this to be really helpful. You can also do some journaling in this as well. And the bullet journal is extremely flexible. If you're looking for something a little bit more minimal and maybe not so as involved as the bullet journal, you can use something like the analog system uh, by Ugmunk. I think this is a really neat idea. Uh, there's plenty of ways to use index cards as well, but um, the analog system by Ugmunk is just a nice way to track some of your priorities that you are interested in pursuing either, either now or at some point in the future or some way day down <laughs> far the road. You can track it using an analog system like this. Now, the last thing that I have recommendation for is not a productivity tool. It's not an analog tool. It's not even a tool at all. But for being effective at remote work, the most important thing you can do is disconnect. One of the hardest things to do when you're working from home is getting away from work because work is happening in the same place. One of the ways to do this is to view your work through the lens of work-life integration instead of seeing them as compartmentalized away from each other. If you have a flexible schedule, if you have the ability to work from home as well, if you have the ability to kind of flex things a little bit more in your day, that's awesome. Leverage that. Spend some time away from the computer. You don't have to work at all hours of the day. If you have a separate space where you can work in, that's a really great thing. If you don't, try to create some kind of separation between your work 
and your life in your home. You don't have to see them as compartmentalized, but you definitely need space away from work to recharge. One of the best things you can do to avoid burnout when you're working from home is to develop your own rest ethic or a set of values and systems to incorporate rest into your life. And one of the easiest things you can do to get started with that is just say, at this specific time of the day, I'm done with work. If there's work that needs to be done, it's happening tomorrow after this time because that gives you space to disconnect. You can get outside, you can spend some time doing things that you love, but ultimately just step away from work. You don't have to keep working when you're at home just because there's work to do. Well, that wraps things up for this video. If you found it helpful, be sure to let me know in the comments and hit that subscribe button as well. My name is Justin with Effective Remote Work. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.